Second Chronicles chapter 13. Now the 18th year of King Jeroboam began Abijah to reign over Judah. Okay, now we're down south. Southern king, Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was also Micaiah, the daughter of Ural of Gibeath. And there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. Again, civil war. It hasn't stopped just because Rehoboam has gone. We read about Rehoboam and Jeroboam having a constant uh, uh, civil war, constant battle. And it's going on again, which would probably make you come to the conclusion that Jeroboam was the source of the, of the, of the civil war, this unrest. We've gone now from David to Solomon to Rehoboam, now to... Abijah. And Abijah set the battle in Ray with an array of valiant men of war. So he sends out the elite. Uh, today it'd be uh, the you know the Navy SEALs, the Marines. With even four hundred thousand chosen men. Well he just didn't send four thousand men out there. Chosen, ones that could do the job were skilled. Jeroboam also set the battle in Ray against him. With 800,000 chosen men, being mighty men of valor. So you got the elite versus the elite, and you've got uh, 400,000 of Judah versus 800,000 of uh, Israel. Israel outranks Judah 100%. Every man of Judah will have to fight two men of Israel. The odds look okay, terrible. But it all depends on what side you are with God. And Abijah stood up upon Mount Zimramon, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam, and all Israel. He said, well, What about the, re you know, we talk about America's and sin. What about all the recent wars that we won and, and victory and all that? We never won Korea. We didn't win uh, Vietnam. Uh, bin Laden was much more wicked than our president. Sodom was much more, and actually threw, well, launched missiles into Israel, which to show that God will curse them that curse the Jew. We take note of what nations and what happens to them when they go against Israel. You know, the next... I mean, we're looking at now uh, Syria. We're looking at uh, North Korea. We may lose those next battles because we're no better. We told when we read where where they told they didn't want to do God no more. That we read last night that they turned from God and God was going to wipe them out had they not repented. Which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, "Hear me, thou Jeroboam, and all Israel." The king stands up and he's he's going to talk to the to the enemy. Ought ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever? Quoting scripture. That's found in 2 Samuel 7, 8 through 16. He says, listen, it belongs to David. Well, it's too bad that Solomon sinned. Even to him and to his sons by a covenant of Saul. Salt is very precious. Salt is something that the body needs. And one of the things that God says about his offering is you are not to lack the salt. If it deserves salt, God said you better put salt on it. It's amazing how God doesn't want pig. He doesn't want swine flesh. Uh, he, he, want, he doesn't want unclean animals, but it's salt. And the fat. Two things that doctors tell you you're not supposed to have today. Well, I just read today a woman over 100 years old had bacon the entire, her entire life. I love when God throws a monkey wrench into the educated people. Now, that doesn't mean if you're 35 years old, you go start munching on Your body ain't prepared for it. You'll die and kill over age 40. All right? Yet Jeroboam, yet, that's a funny word, Jeroboam the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon the son of David, he worked with Solomon. 
But Solomon had a problem with him, and Jeroboam took off, didn't come back to you after Solomon died, went to Rehoboam and said, listen, proper thing, listen, I'm just lighten the load for us. Has risen up and has rebelled against his Lord. Now, notice it says that's a small L-O-R-D. No, he rebelled against the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. He did not usurp the authority of the kingdom because God told him. When he sent the prophet to him, to said, listen, and he cleared the jacket, and he ripped it in 12 pieces. He gave Jeroboam 10. He says, listen, I'm going to rent the kingdom. You're going to get 10 tribes. Judah will get two tribes. That was not a rebellion against Rehoboam. God ordained that. I believe we saw that last night's uh, chapter. So he's lying when he says that he has risen up against David. No, God told him to do it. And God did it. And God blessed it. And God honored it. Now when he turned to the other gods and everything else, that was not right. That was not proper. So verse 6 is really a lie. Because God told him to do it. And there are gathered unto him vain men. Okay. The children of Belial. And that's just saying children of the devil. Wickedness. You don't want to be part of this group. And have strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. When Rehoboam was young and tender hearted and could not withstand them. Well, yeah, there was civil war and all that. Yeah, Jeroboam turned wicked and turned against God. But Rehoboam, when he was tender hearted, well, he didn't want no he didn't want to grow up. He went to the young men and got their counsel and forsook the old men. So where is his tender hearted his young saying? Had he obeyed the, the wise men, had he really truly sought God, listen, he would, he would gain, gain in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But he didn't. He adhered to the stupid young ones. And that's why the kingdom was messed up, and that's how God used it. God used him for not doing right to break the kingdom. And now ye think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David. Okay, yeah. I'll take that. Because Jeroboam is in rebellion. And Judah is. That's where the tabernacle, the temple, and everything is. Okay. I'll give him that for credit. And he's going to fight with the sons of David. The civil war. Okay. And he'd be a great multitude. Yep, we already saw. 100% more than Judah. Man, man for two men. Now it sounds like he's getting a little crybaby-ish. And there are you, there are with you golden calves. True. Which Jeroboam made you for gods. Yes, very much true. And that's where Jeroboam's gone wrong. Had he not made those calves? Has he not made them the gods? Had he not thrown the, the Levites out and the priests out? Had he stuck to God? Everything would have been to God's liking and God's approval with a split nation. This is where Jeroboam goes wrong, these golden calves. And the question is I got for anybody who's out there, you've you got golden calves. Aaron made one. And Moses was allowed to destroy it and get rid of it. These calves are going to surface, and they're going to surface, and they're going to surface until Assyria comes in and destroys the land. Have you not cast out the priests of the Lord? Yes, they did. We read that last night. The sons of Aaron? Oh, did you get that? The priest. 
All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. The sons of Aaron, that is the priest he threw out. Not just Levites, the priests. And the Levites, got that? He threw the priest out, and he threw the Levites out. See, if you keep reading the boring books like Second Chronicles, you learn new things. You, know, you just read your Psalms. You don't learn nothing in Psalms if you don't read the whole Bible. And have made you priests after the manner of the nations of other lands. Yes, true. Oh, made you priests after the manner of the nations of the land. Gee, is there a group around today that's running around that has priests? Well, the Bible just told you it's after other lands. If you study and go into it, it goes right back to the Babylonian where they had priests made. It goes back to the Egyptians. Listen, the Bible speaks that we are priests, Revelation chapter 1. We are kings, but we don't go around dressing up and make ourselves, you know, be known in the streets and in the in the high places and anything else. But if you step in an elevator or you're in a store with one of them outfits that call themselves a priest, you know definitely he's a priest of that church because he doesn't know which way his tag goes. So this is true. Notice how much truth He's spoken. Yep, yeah, but that little lie that you, you know you went against the house of David and all that. And that man, he, he as much truthful he's got, he still lies. So that whosoever cometh to conscious, consecrate himself with a young bullock and seven rams. So the price to be a priest in Israel is told in the Bible. You have to bring a young bullock moo the cow and you had to bring seven rams and that was the price to be a priest the same may be a priest of them that are no gods true very much true show me where it says in the law of Moses that the priest was supposed to bring anything to be a priest of the Levite. No, you had to be a Pacific family. And you know what goes on in churches today? Any church, if you slip a couple green bags and stuff in, in that, you could be somebody in the church. And it's not always just money either. Oh, I know you. You're, you're my best friend or you're part of this family. Well, we're done with family. Well, we're only the ones that God recognizes today. If you're the family of God by adoption through Jesus Christ. No gods. I like that. You know, churches out there today, they're out there serving no gods. But, as for us, the Lord is our God. True. We have not forsaken him. True. And the priests which minister unto the Lord are the sons of Aaron and the Levites wait upon their business. Very much true. And there is again, Levites. Not all Levites are priests, but all priests are Levites. He says the son of Aaron, there's the priest. And the Levites wait upon their business, which shows if you are not of Aaron, you did business, but you weren't a priest. It's an important statement there. And what he's telling you right now is, Abijah is saying, listen, right now in Jerusalem, they're back there doing the work in the temple like they're supposed to be doing. What are you guys doing? You, you, you got guys coming up paying to be your priests. You got you, those golden calves. And he says in verse, verse 8, there are with you golden calves. I, maybe they're right there in the battlefield. Or maybe he means with you, they're in the land. 
And they burned unto the Lord every morning and every evening burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. That would be the lamb in the morning and the lamb at night. They're doing what the law tells them to do. You already know who's going to win this battle. Why is he speaking to all Israel? He's trying to tell them, hey, this is what you guys are supposed to be doing. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. Come on over to the right side. He's on a mountain. Gee, would you think he's street preaching? He's on a pulpit. Jesus preached on a mountain. Jesus preached at the beach, sitting in a boat. He's trying to get the people to do right, right? The showbread also set they in order upon the pure table. Now, isn't that funny? What's it say there? It says table. Remember how many Solomon made? He made ten of them. So only one of those tables were for the showbread. Answers our question we had when we studied that. When we talk about the ten tables, well, what do you do with the showbread? The answer is here. One table. And the candlestick of gold with the lamps thereof. Well, there were candlesticks. There were ten of them. To burn every evening. For we kept the charge of the Lord our God, but ye have forsaken him. Oh, look at that. He tells them what you're supposed to do. He tells them how you're supposed to do it. Then he turns around and gets in your face and says, we're supposed to love you. No, he tells them right in their face, you're doing wrong. You're sinning. Did you get that? And behold, he's not done. God himself is with us for our captains. That's a mighty boast. And his priests with sounding trumpets to cry alarm against you. The priests are blowing the trumpets. We're in battle. O children of Israel, fight ye not against the Lord God of our fa your fathers. He's saying the same thing that Jesus Christ told Paul. He says, why are you persecuting me? Not the Christian. Why are you persecuting me? And what, what, the, what uh, Elijah is saying here, listen, when you're going to fight us, Judah, you ain't going to fight us. You are fighting God. Because God is on our side because we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. So when somebody cusses you out on the street, when someone gives you a hard time on the street, when somebody gives you a difficult time, for the Bible says all they that live godly shall suffer persecution, when they give you that hard time, instead of sticking your tail between your legs and running away, just realize the fact is that they're doing it to your Savior and not you. And that just maybe if that person don't get right, you imagine the great white throne judgment where the Lord Jesus Christ calls you up, puts his arm around you, you want to say what you told me? Because this is mine. But Jeroboam caused an ambush to come behind them. He didn't listen to a word. He sent troops around the back. So they were before Judah, and the ambush was behind them. So they got Israel before them, and they got Israel behind them. And they're outnumbered two to one. And when Judah looked back, and behold, the battle was before and behind, and they cried unto the Lord. And the priest sounded with the trumpets. Now, later on, as we get into Chronicles, we're going to see they're going to cry to other nations. They're going to run to Egypt. They're going to run to Syria. They're going to run wherever they can get help, but they don't run to God. But it's great that Abijah runs to God. And the priests are sounding the trumpets. They didn't lead the, they didn't lead the battle. You know, America got the idea of holding the flag and having the, the fife and the, and the drummer there. They got it out of the Bible.
the priests were God's people. Every one of those young people that held the flags and all that, were they God's people or were they not? Then the men of Judah gave a shout. As the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. God took over. When you got God on your side, no matter how many people are on the other side, you're going to win. And the children of Israel fled before Judah. And God delivered them into their hand. Now you would think, the fact is that God delivered them, you would think that the Jeroboam and all his men would think, well, their gods are failures. They lost the battle, so we got to go to the God of Judah, which is the right God, which they won. No, they don't. Even in failures, even a God that won't answer them, they still keep going back to that God. You say, what's that God today they keep running to? Pills, alcohol, and anything else but God. And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. And Abijah and his people slew them with a great slaughter. So there fell down slain of Israel 500,000 chosen men. Well, Jeroboam is left with 300,000 now. And Judah had 400,000. So every man of uh, Abijah's army killed one man and a half. I don't know how he killed half a man, but... Thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time. And the children of Judah prevailed because they relied on the Lord God of their fathers. There's the winning side. And Abijah pursued after Jeroboam and took cities from him. Bethel with the towns thereof. Well, Bethel is the place where they put that golden calves. Bethel becomes a place of, of, the, of the foul worship. There's a place in one of the prophets that God says, go to Bethel and transgress. So Abijah goes where one of these, where these, these calves are. And the towns thereof, and Jeshaniah with the towns thereof, and Ephraim with the towns thereof. Neither did Jeroboam recover strength again in the days of Abijah. And the Lord struck him, and he died. Well, not only did God go against his army, God did not allow him to build up an army no more, and then God struck him dead. Jeroboam never got right. And Abijah waxed mightily and married 14 wives. There, there's that marriage thing in all the women. And begat twenty and two sons and sixteen daughters. And the rest of the acts of Abijah, his ways, and his sayings. Oh, he had sayings like Solomon did. He wrote things. Where are they? Only the Holy Spirit and God knows. Are written in the story of the prophet Ido. Ido. Well, there we close with that chapter.